Um, okay, marketing Einkorn, Emmer, and Spelt. So our main Muted. REI grant is to be working on the marketing aspect and um, consumer outreach. We'll be doing some preference tastings next year after we um, see what the harvest is like in the fall. And um, this is a photo here of a field day at Cornell last summer. We're excited about these grains coming in to see what they taste like, definitely. Um, Einkorn, Emmer, and Spelt um, have a relatively low profile here in the United States. Spelt is probably the best known. Uh, these grains are definitely more well known and utilized in European countries and some Mediterranean still. There are regions within Switzerland, France, and Italy, UK that I know of. I'm sure there may be more, but are, that are making a concerted effort to grow these grains, specifically Emmer and Einkorn. Um, spelt has been grown in Eastern Europe and the Mediterranean continuously. We'll start with Einkorn, um, considered the mother wheat and there's a lot of interest in this grain because of the potential for people who have gluten sensitivities to eat this without having digestive problems. And it really it does have excellent flavor. Um, we can attest to that and make flatbreads frequently with einkorn that I get from Ellie Ragosa at Grow Seed, who's growing out einkorn in western Massachusetts. Um, we did a search of what sort of a buzz was online, just looking at einkorn and seeing what people were saying. And that showed some interesting things. Um, here's a website. Someone was listing reasons why they had switched to einkorn wheat. And they had been a home miller baker for many years and um, had gone to einkorn as their preferred grain. Um, this is an example of uh, one of the communities that has chosen to preserve einkorn and growing, growing it out intentionally, uh, Slow Food Presidia in Provence, France. Um, and the company Jovial has uh, great information on einkorn. They have a whole recipe section and um, a lot of information on the history. Uh, questions around the gluten-free question um, and lots of things on there for people to check out. Emmer um, is most frequently confused with farro or farro with emmer. Um, in Italian cooking it's very well known, although what we've learned is that even within uh, the Italian food farro may mean emmer or it may mean spelt. Um, but we, these are a couple of examples here of um, using the correct name for Emmer. The USDA brochure in particular was fun to look at. Um, again, we're trying to clarify that uh, the name of this grain is Emmer. And for all intents and purposes, it's the same as Faro. It is not the same as spelt. Then that gets into confusion around what the name is there. Um, but Emmer, and as far as I've understood, a real farro is the grain that we're looking for. Um, it's definitely a beloved ingredient in Italian cooking. Um, it has been described as hearty and robust. And in one article I found was described as more elegant than earnest. Um, it has multiple uses and I think there's a very big potential for emmer to be used in pasta. If you go into any Italian specialty store, you're going to find farro pasta um, and it's, it's great. It goes really well with cooked greens or mushrooms, holds up to a chicken stock or any kind of stock. Um, here are some examples of some products we've seen. The, the breads are from Europe. Um, this is an emmer bread and you can see that it's a little more dense and probably one of those varieties that has the lower gluten content. Uh, we had sprouted emmer come into the market this year. Um, definitely seeing a very strong interest in sprouted grains because of the gluten issue. People are finding that eating sprouted grains helps their digestive issues.
No. Okay. Um, here's an example. Oh, sorry, my cursor is being slow, and then it's advancing too fast. So I apologize. Um, this is one of our producers, Cayuga Pro Organics, um, that sells at Green Market and made it into Bon Appetit magazine a couple of years ago. And they did list it as Emmer, which we were happy about. Um, and there's a very well-known soup um, called Zupa de Faro that we could rename Zupa de Emmer. And just as a note, this photo does not match the recipe. Um, and in fact, the closer I looked at that grain, I thought that might be spelt after all and not Emmer. But um, regardless, it makes a delicious and classic soup. The other thing with this soup, the um, Zupa de Faro is made with beans and combined with Emmer um, makes a complete protein. Um, spelt is a more familiar grain here in the US. It's had a long presence in New York and Pennsylvania. I find that when I go upstate, I see more spelt products, um, the Honest Weight Co-op in Albany, and they probably had 10 times more spelt products than we usually see down here. I'm not sure why that is. Um, but uh, spelt has long been sought out as a healthy alternative to white bread. And again, some people with gluten sensitivity are finding they can digest spelt more easily. Um, and we're seeing a lot of spelt products come in line. Um, and our artisan bakers are starting to have a greater interest in spelt. And here's a few examples of um, breads that we're seeing here in the city or have access to from the city. Just wanted to make a note about ancient grains as a marketing term, though. And here's some examples of of where these pop up. I I was somewhere over the holidays and saw a giant box of ancient grains crackers, and I was blown away. Um, but just to note that a lot of things are getting lumped into this category. So quinoa, buckwheat, and amaranth are included. Those are not real grains, first of all. Um, and then the other grains, I'm sure Julie or Frank could tell us more about than I know, but um, we're looking at emmer, einkorn, and spelt as, as ancient grains. And here's some of the press, an article from the Washington Post helping to drive some of the interest in uh, these grains, uh, the health benefits in particular. It's a pretty strong statement. Um, we know through our markets that consumers are looking for nutritional value, first of all. Um, they definitely are interested in, in the impact on digestion and health overall. Flavor is a big um, driver, especially for chefs or people who are looking for gourmet ingredients to use. Um, and that their dollar value matches the value that they believe those products have. Um, we think that there's a big market for these grains. There's a huge interest in products that are gluten-free, organic, and nutrient-dense. Um, it's a, a, a small segment of the marketplace that I see growing tremendously. So to sum up some of the things that um, I found while researching this is uh, that we do know these grains are not gluten-free but they do have a lower gluten content in general. Unmuted. Pointed out though that emmers have occasionally a higher gluten um, content. Um, people are interested in them because of the ability to digest them more easily. Uh, they do have a higher protein content, and so people are looking to incorporate more whole grains into their diet. Um, can do that with emmer, einkorn, and spelt. Um, they're very versatile. You know, So far we've stuck to talking about the baked goods, but we're seeing some of our distillers and brewers be interested in them, although the qualities that are needed for those are the opposite of baking qualities, so they're looking for a lower protein content. Um, but they all have great flavor. Uh, this is an example of this is a grains guide that we did at Green Market to promote grains. This came out a couple of years ago, and we featured uh, the grains that can be grown in this region and that we're trying to develop the market for down here. These are available as well if you want to contact us and we can send you grains guides. 
Uh, these are tastings that we've put on at various conferences to expose people to what the local grains taste like. And we have seen uh, a, a huge growth in the use of local flour in the city. And last year, there was a 14-page uh, spread in New York Magazine on bakeries that were using local flour, or most of them. I think there were 11 out of 13 bakeries were using local flour. This is a sample of a short course that's coming up uh, that we're doing with Ogren and the Wide Awake Bakery next week. And we'll be talking about baking with Emmer Einkorn and Spelt. And this goes back to a shot of Einkorn growing at the field trials this past summer. We'll be excited to see more Einkorn come into the marketplace, definitely. 